and welcome to this project for the web video where we're going to look at creating a custom program entity and other objects as part of this video. We'll log into make.powerapps.com and once we get into our Power Apps designer here we'll go ahead and navigate to data then entities and uh, when I'm in here I can search for project entity that's going to look for here I can enter the name and space enter I do have to make sure that I'm in managed or all once I find it I can click on the project entity and at this point I can actually start creating some fields and I want to go ahead and click the add field button and we'll start with the project description and we'll enter the display name and then we'll go ahead and select the type and the type in this case is going to be multi-line text and we'll select done click add field again and in this case we're going to create an estimated cost field and the data type for this one is going to be currency go ahead and select currency click done again and we'll go ahead and click add field once again and this time we'll enter an overall health field and this is a field to be manually set to specify how the project's tracking and this was an option set which is a predefined list of values go ahead and enter those values in here we'll have three options here for the project manager really on track on watch and troubled will be those options available now once we enter those values in we can click the save button which will bring up additional options and uh, one of those additional options will be to specify a default value and we're going to specify a default value of on track and we'll go ahead and select done and now we want to go ahead and, and add those fields to a view we'll click on the views selection here and we do want to modify the all projects view and we'll click directly on that view and we are showing unused fields which helps us find the fields we want to add and we'll go ahead and, and find first the overall health field which is down here we'll click on that adds it to the view and then we can click on it to reposition it and move it next to the name field and now we want to find our estimated cost field we'll go ahead and add that field to the view we can reposition that as well and now that those are repositioned we can save and uh, we'll go ahead and publish that as well and we'll back out click the back button and then we'll click on the forms selection here to show the forms and uh, we want to edit the information form so we'll go ahead and click on the information form and we want to uh, add fields to these forms so the first thing we want to do is add fields to the general or the first column rather and we can make sure that we first have focus on that area by clicking in there we can click on a field or just click on the section general I have the owner field selected and I click on project description places the description field under owner now I'm putting focus on the second column which is the estimate section and with that section selected I can click on estimated cost which will add that field to that section so so far I have those two fields added I can go back to that first section and add another field there I have my project description field selected and I can click on overall health which places the overall health field just under my project description field and now I'm going to save and we'll go ahead and, and publish that as well uh, now I'm going to back out and this time I want to create my program entity which means I have to click on entities here in the breadcrumbs to go to the top level and select the new entity field button here and the display name is going to be program and we'll go ahead and specify that put it in both display name boxes and then we'll click that create button after that we need to create a relationship we'll select the relationships link here and then we'll add a relationship now what we want to do is uh, we need to create a one-to-many which means one program per many projects so we'll select that one-to-many and uh, the one's already selected therefore we need to select the many which is going to be project there you go on the left is current the one which is program right is many project with that selected we can go ahead and click done now let's go ahead and add some fields and we'll go ahead and start with program cost right? So program cost is going to be a currency type and we're going to go ahead and this is going to have a roll up it's basically going to be the roll up of the cost fields from the project level when I click that it brings up my roll up field dialog 
I can select the relation, which is to the projects record. The sum is going to be the aggregate, and then the field, which is related, is going to be the estimated cost field. Click the green check mark, and then the save and close link to save and close that field. Click done, and now I'm going to add another field. In this case, we want to have a project count field. So we'll add the project count. And this is going to be whole number. We'll select whole number here for the data type. And then once selected, we'll go ahead and click on that add calculated or roll up and select roll up. We'll save the pending changes. And just like before, the dialog box will come up. And then we'll go up in the roll up field, select the relation, which is projects. And then we'll add an aggregation, which this time is going to be count. And then it will again be the project related field. Click the green check mark, save and close. And that will allow us to, uh, again, move on to the next field that we're going to create here. And in this case, we're going to create program description. That's going to be the display name and the data type. For program description is going to go ahead and be multi-line text. Select that and click done. And that takes care of the fields for program. I do want to go back to my project entity now because I want to add that program field to the form the information form. So let's select the form selector and it shows the information form. We'll click on that to open it for editing. And I want to make sure I have that first column selected. So with the first column selected, go ahead and put focus in here. And then we'll go ahead and select that program field and add it to the form. And now you can see there's the program field. We'll go ahead and save and publish. And that takes care of the project information form. We'll back out. And what I need to do now is I need to go to the top level and then we're going to select the program entity. We can go ahead and select custom here, which we'll just show just our program entity. And while in here, I can go ahead and select forms. And what I want is the main information form. There we go. And there is my form. And what we're going to do is we're going to first rename that tab. I want it to be program details. And we'll put that in for both the tab label and the name of the tab here. And what we're going to do is add some fields here, right? Now let's take care of this. Let's add the program description field. And we also have the uh, program cost field that we're going to add here. So we'll add those two fields here. We'll go ahead and save. And the other thing I want here is I want a projects tab, which will show us the related projects. In order to do that, we need to add a one column tab to the right of program details. We'll drag that out there and drop it. We'll select the tab and we'll go ahead and change the label and the name. We'll call that projects. All right, with that set, now we need to go ahead and drag out a subgrid. And the subgrid is the actual item that allows us to specify we want to show related records and those related records will be projects and the default view we want to be all projects because they may not be mine but I would like to see them all. We'll click done and that will take care of specifying the subgrid. Here we go. Looking good. Now we we'll go back to program details. That one's complete as well. Excellent. Everything's moving into place. Oh, we did forget one field here. Let's go ahead and add the, uh, we need to add the project count. We'll go ahead and put that under program cost. Right. Now it looks like we're in a good position. Let's save this. And uh, we'll finish it up with the publish. Excellent. Let's go ahead and select the back button. And uh, we're, we're in a good place now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a model driven app and that app is going to contain the changes we just created so the changes will be navigation to both the projects entity and the program entity let's specify a name for this app project for the web now we don't need to specify any other changes so we'll just click done here and let's uh, click on the sitemap editing and this opens the sitemap designer and first we need to specify a name for the new area section we'll go ahead and click on that specify a title of programs okay one that specify we'll go ahead and specify a name for the group we're going to call that programs as well 
And next we need to specify some settings for the sub area. First we'll select the type, which is going to be a type of entity. And then we're gonna select an entity of program. We'll find the program in the list. And that is selected. Excellent, now let's move on. We need to drag another component out there. First we're gonna drag a group out there. And we're gonna name that group project. Specify that title of projects. And then we need to, to drag a sub area out there under projects. And the sub area is gonna connect us to the projects entity. The type will be entity. And then the entity will be projects. We'll scroll down and find projects in that list. And once we locate that, we'll go ahead and select that. Excellent, so that is the way we want it. We'll save and then we'll publish. Then we'll go ahead and save and close. Do the same thing here, we'll save, which will enable the publish button. Then we will publish. Then we will save and close. Now you can see we have the default project app and we also have the new modified project for the web app. Let's go ahead and click on project for the web. And when it launches fully, we should notice that we have a programs link in the left-hand navigation as well as the projects link. Right, so if we click on projects, we see the one project in there. When we click on programs, we don't have currently any active because we just created that entity. Let's go ahead and create one. We'll call this our CRM deployment program. And we'll also give it a, a description as well. We'll just copy that name, paste it in the description. And we'll go ahead and save that. And what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and navigate to that projects tab. Of course, we have no related projects yet. We have to uh, create projects or relate projects. So uh, I'm gonna fast forward through the creation of some projects here. Create a discovery project. We'll put in a cost of $50,000. We're gonna create another project here, design and build. It's gonna be another project that's part of that CRM deployment. $75,000 cost. We're gonna go ahead and create one more project. This is train and deploy. And this one's gonna have a cost of $125,000. So there are the three projects and the metadata associated with those projects. If I go back to program details, right, see some of the info here. Again, we wanna calculate that program cost. Let's recalculate. Now you see the total program cost is 250,000, which is the roll up of the project cost. Click on the project links. That again shows us all the projects. We just added those three new ones. If I wanted to, I could navigate within um, one of these projects. Let's go ahead and navigate within that discovery project. Again, see if you look at the program field, you can see that we are associated with CRM deployment. I could break that link if I wanted to. Go back to projects again. And remember the My First Project, that's independent project, no program relation, but you could click there and associate it to a program if you wanted to. Therefore, you do have that option. Right. Going back up to my programs, clicking on CRM deployment one more time. Uh, we know we have more than zero projects. I just didn't calculate this. Let's go ahead and recalculate that. Now we're reflecting reality. We have the three project count in there. Again, there are the three projects that are part of the program. So we are looking good. So let's move on to the last tip of this video here and look at incorporating Microsoft Teams into the mix with project for the web. And the, the first thing I need to do is I need to harvest that URL for the project for the web app that we just created. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll navigate into it and then I'll select and copy that URL, launch uh, my Teams environment, and then you can see I have a number of different Teams here, X1050 launch. Uh, but I also have my project management office, right? General channel in here, okay? So um, what I want to do is add a channel and I'm going to haul this channel project for the web. Go ahead and click add when I'm done. And that will go ahead and create the new channel called project for the web. Nice. So we have the channel. The next thing I want to do is I want to add um, a tab within there. And I'm going to add the type of website and I'm going to give it a name of project for the web. I'm going to paste in that URL I just copied and I'm going to deselect that post to the channel about this tab and select save and this will add my project for the web environment inside a tab within my P1 
PMO Office team. And there you go. So there's a project for the web within Microsoft Teams. I have the full interface. I can click on my program, look at the entire program. I can look at the projects within a program if I would like to see all the metadata. If I want to, I can start a conversation about projects that are in the environment. Um, if I want to start a conversation about the CRM deployment, I can do that right here. Uh, maybe if I want to, I can initiate the start of a meeting that will be held later in the day about these projects. So there's a number of things that I can do uh, at this time within Teams. So initiate the conversation there. I can, uh, again, bring back the navigation to look at all the Teams. Okay. There's also the ability to have file storage in here too, if I need to have that. Of course, there's going to be the posts channel that will show me all the posts that are going on in the PMO team, right? There's many different capabilities going on here uh, in the team's environment that will add to the capabilities and the usage of Project for the Web. So it's all great. There's lots going on here. Um, so that's how you would add it. Very, very easy. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks very much for watching.